We are so glad that you've joined us for Family Chapel during Lent. This is a very special season in our life as we follow Jesus all the way to his journey on the cross and then from there to Easter. But that will be another and a great time for us to celebrate together. But right now, we are entering into Lent. So we have our gathering prayer, and I hope that you will repeat after me. Dear God, we have gathered to worship you. Dear God, we have gathered to worship you. We have come to thank you for loving us. We have come to thank you for loving us. Amen. Amen. As we light the candles, we give thanks for the great light of the world, your Son, Jesus. May our lives be a light to others. Amen. Now would be a good time for you to stop this recording for just a moment so that you can light a candle or candles at home. Maybe it's a real candle, maybe it's an electric candle, but whatever it is, when you light that candle, give thanks for the light of Christ and the way that you help to carry that light into the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. God of mercy and forgiveness, you made us to love you and your creation and to love our neighbors as ourselves. But we fall into sin when we choose to do hurtful things. Guide us through the 40 days of Lent to come closer to you with prayer, fasting, and giving. Amen. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. People from all over had gathered in Jerusalem for a festival. Some Greek people came up to Philip, one of Jesus' disciples, and said, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. So Philip and Andrew, Peter's brother, went to tell Jesus there were people to see him. Jesus said, I think my time to be glorified has finally come. You know, one grain of wheat is just one grain of wheat unless you bury it in the ground. Just when you think it's dead, it starts to grow and you have more and more wheat. That's how it is with your life. If you cling so closely to the life you know, you're going to lose it. But those who are ready to turn away from their life to follow me will have a life that is eternal. If you want to follow me, serve me wherever you find me. God will honor you. My soul is agitated. Do I dare say, Father, don't make me go through with this. Save me. No, I will not do that. This is my purpose, 
Father, let me bring only glory to your name. All of a sudden, a voice from heaven said, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd couldn't believe what they just heard. It must have been thunder, somebody said. No, I think it was an angel talking to him, somebody else said. Jesus told them that voice was for your benefit, not mine. This will be a turning point for this world. When I am lifted up high above the earth, I will gather all people everywhere to myself. He said this because he knew he was about to die on the cross. The Gospel of the Lord. Every time we get together for church, one of the things that we do is read from a very special book. We bring it to the center of the people, and it's from the Gospels, one of the four Gospels. And they all tell the story about one person. Can you guess who that person is? I think you probably know. Let me see if we can draw him. I'll say it one more time. We don't know really what he looked like because he lived a long time ago, about 2,000 plus years ago. But his name is Jesus, which is a great name because what it really means is God saves. And we read all kinds of stories about him and we read them at different times of the year. Uh, so. That's Jesus, or my drawing of Jesus. Anyway, um, Halo, because he's a special person. Yeah, right. So we read stories about the beginning of his life. Let's see, when he was a little baby. Happy baby. And when he was born, they wrapped him in swaddling clothes. They put them all clothes all around him. And instead of having a crib, you know where they put him, right? Where they put him when he was a little baby. Put him in a manger because there was like no other place for him to live. So he was hanging out with the animals. Let's give him a companion here. This is one of the animals that was in the stable. Didn't know quite what was going on. Never had a visitor like this. That's the beginning of his life. What time... What, what story is that? Can you talk with your family about what day that is? Okay. We read stories about the end of his life. And next week, we're going to start Holy Week, which is the most special week in the whole year for the church. And it tells stories about Jesus at the end of his life here on earth. And we read about, you know what day this might be? When Jesus went on the cross, he talked about that in the reading that we just heard. Um, that's Good Friday, and you can talk with your parents about why we call it good. And right after that, after Jesus died, we come to Easter. We don't want to get there too quick, but there are all kinds of stories in between that we've been reading about Jesus. And a couple of them are stories where um, Jesus hears a voice from heaven, where Jesus hears the voice from God. And we have one of those stories today, but there are a few others that came along the way, which were all ways of telling Jesus that he was not alone in what he was doing, that God was with him. So when Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River by John the Baptist, it said the skies opened up in a voice from heaven. Let's see what the voice said. voice from heaven said, Jesus is my beloved son. I am well pleased in him. He is beloved. I love him. Then Jesus, we read the story. Remember the story when Jesus went up on the mountain with his best buddies? Um, it's called Transfiguration. That's a fancy name. But anyway, Jesus goes up on the mountain with his buddies and um, they don't know what's going on because the lights are shining brightly and Moses and Elijah appear and a voice from heaven comes. And that voice says, listen, listen to Jesus. Listen to what he has to say. Listen to his teaching. He's got something important to tell you. And today, Jesus is talking with the disciples and he knows he's about to go to Good Friday. And he's thinking, should I back out of this? Is this like going to 
do I really have to go through with this? And he says, yes, I do have to go through with this because it's going to glorify God's name. I want you to think about what that word glorify means. But then a voice comes from heaven and it says, I have glorified my name. And when you go on the cross, that will be the hour of glory. Now, glory is a fancy word. It's kind of a churchy word. I don't know how much we use it, but it really means that we see something about God's greatness that we hadn't seen before. And Jesus says that when I go on the cross, when I give myself for you, when I'm like that seed that goes in the ground and needs to die for a bit, it will bring new life. And so that will glorify you. So even this cross, which was one of the saddest moments in history ever, one of the saddest moments, is an occasion for God's love to shine through. So Jesus here heard these voices. He heard God saying, you are beloved. He heard God saying, Jesus has something to teach you. He heard God saying, there is glory. I'm going to be, I'm going to show myself in who Jesus is. And um, so that's really what we're going to be talking about in Holy Week when it comes up next week. But that will be a time when we get to see how God loves us and how God gave himself for us. Jesus is not the only one who hears voices from heaven. While we may not hear him out loud, like you hear him like a loudspeaker or something, we're all the time hearing ways uh, voices that tell us that God loves us. We hear them in church. We hear them in our family. We hear them when we uh, help other people and recognize God's love is present in this world. So think about how you can hear God's voice speaking to you. Amen. So now we're going to say the creed together so that we can remember the important things that we believe. So repeat after me. I believe in God's love. I believe in God's love. I believe in Jesus' love. I believe in Jesus' love. And the Holy Spirit too. And the Holy Spirit too. Tells me what I ought to do. Tells me what I ought to do. Tells me what I ought to do. And now we're going to offer the prayers, and after each prayer, Everyone at home and here is going to say, hear our prayer. God, thank you for the whole wide world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Thank you, God, for all families and the people we love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for the city we live in and the church we go to. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Please keep our world and our families safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. Please take care of the people who are sick or sad or scared. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Stay with us as we grow. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. For what else shall we pray? This would be a good time for you who are watching at home to pause the video and pray for those things that are especially important to you and especially important for the people you're with so that you can lift up your prayers and your hopes and your fears up to God. Loving God, who chose to live and die as one of us, help us to hear your voice and follow in your path, giving ourselves to others so that we may be united in your love, living as people of your kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And now would be a great time again to pause the video at home so you can share the peace with the people you're with. 
Maybe that's a handshake, maybe that's a big hug. Whatever it is, it's a way to say to the people you're with that you know God loves them and they know God loves you and for you to share that good news with each other. May God, who raises us to new life in Christ, guide you in this holy season, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.